Why didn't I do this sooner? Kim Kardashian reveals moment she fell madly in love with Kanye West on 10th anniversary special of Faye UWK. Kim Kardashian revealed during a milestone special Sunday that she fell in love with Kanye West after he invited her to Paris following her split from Chris Humphreys. The 36-year-old reality star said she fell madly in love with the rapper as soon as she landed and wondered why they had not started dating sooner. She shared the romantic backstory during a Keeping Up With The Kardashians, 10th anniversary special hosted by the show's executive producer Ryan Seacrest, 42. I met him in 2002 or 2003. He was recording the song with Brandy and I was her friend and vividly remembered hanging out with him. Then they did a video together so I'd see him a few times. I remember he was asking his friends who is this Kim Cardi John. He didn't know what my name was and it was really cute. Right before I got married to Chris Humphreys we were talking and I just went a different direction. I think I had to go through that to figure out what I wanted. Ask by Seacrest whether Kenny was talking to her or pursuing her in the run up to her marrying Humphreys she blushed. She said, I don't really know. I can't remember. Probably all of the above. After my breakup I was feeling really low and down and he was like just come to Paris and see my fashion show. He jokes that he put on this whole fashion show just to get a date with me. I went and I stayed with him and that's where we started dating. I swear from the moment I landed and was there, I fell madly in love with him and I thought oh my god, why didn't I do this sooner? This is like what real life is like and love and fun and real support. This is what it is. The entire Kardashian clan, minus Rob, sat down with Seacrest for a 90-minute special program to celebrate the 10th anniversary of their E! reality show. With a total of 310 episodes having aired, Keeping Up With The Kardashians is the longest-running celebrity dosu soap ever and airs in 160 countries. Kim, who spoke candidly about her marriage to Kanye, also revealed that she was hysterical when she found out she was pregnant with North. She told Seacrest, Chloe and I had gone to a fertility doctor and they said they think it would be really hard for me. I was about to freeze my eggs and I randomly got pregnant. I remember calling him Kenny and he thought a family member of mine died. I was so hysterical. I thought my life was over. Obviously it's the best thing that ever happened to me. Kim had a scare, however, when she was suffering severe stomach pain during the early stages of her pregnancy and thought she had miscarried. She said, at one point I thought I had a miscarriage. I was pretty certain about it and I didn't know myself what was going on. I flew all the way home on Thanksgiving and the doctor told me there's no heartbeat, you had a miscarriage. Come in after Thanksgiving dinner, it will be private and no one will be in here. I went in that morning and he's like there's a heartbeat, you didn't have a miscarriage. It was such an emotional Thanksgiving. The family have become close to the team behind their show and crew confidential segments reveal the bond of mutual admiration. Executive producer Arnaud Farge AM told the camera that she rushed him to hospital in the back of her car when she went into labor. She said, the family knows they can trust us and we have their backs. When Kim went into labor with North I had to meet her, snug her in my car, throw a blanket over her and drive her to the hospital. While Kylie Jenner said she cannot remember a time before keeping up with the Kardashians, her sister Kendall explained, I think it became so normal for us, just because we were so young. As footage from the last 10 years aired, Khloe Kardashian was shown to have undergone the greatest transition in terms of her appearance. She told Seacrest, At the time I never thought I was fat myself. I would call myself fat because everybody else called me fat. I think I'm happier but for a bunch of different reasons, not from the way I look, knowledge is power, you know better you do better. Speaking about boyfriend Tristan Thompson, she revealed they got together after being set up on a blind date by a mutual friend. She explained, I was put on a blind date with Tristan and that's how I met Tristan. Brandon Jennings, who's a basketball player who's a friend of mine and Malika's said you're such a good girl I want to introduce you to someone. I was at the Bel Air Hotel. He came to the dinner. I didn't want to go on a blind date so Brandon kind of ambushed the blind date. I had a bunch of people and he brought him and we just connected. Courtney's relationship with Scott Disick was also put under the spotlight as she was asked by Seacrest how things currently stood between them. Smiling, she said, I guess we're co-parenting our kids and just trying to get along. 
He's family. We're definitely psychotic. Since we broke up the last time, which was almost two years ago, we've never been back together. It's confusing to people, but we've never won time, Courtney added. Ask the same question, Scott joked. There's no connection. She made the very clear just now. She's the only person I've ever loved in my life, so, I think she cute and stuff. Asked whether he still hits on Courtney, he quipped, yeah, I try to f asterisk 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 her like once a week. Courtney admitted I don't know when asked whether the door was completely closed on her romantic relationship with Scott, who has since started a relationship with 19-year-old Sophia Ritchie. She said, the debauchery that has gone on has definitely closed the door several billion times. Scott said, every time I become too good of a person she stops loving me because she fell in love with a guy who was a little bit f asterisk 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 head up. When Courtney disputed his claims, he added, I treat you like royalty and you don't say hello to me. I spit in your face and you're like hey babe. He also joked that he was jerking off pretty heavy after admitting that he found the lack of intimacy tough, and like no, with a wink, when asked if he was dating other women. When Seacrest suggested that Scott still loved Courtney, he said I don't think there's any question of that and added I have a question for you before getting down on one knee. While the Kardashian sisters sat there open-mouthed, he quickly got back up and laughed. Ron Kardashian was notably absent from the anniversary special but Mother Chris Jenner revealed Rob's great. He's working on a new clothing line. I see him every day because he lives down the street. Kendall told Seacrest, we're on a group chat every single day. Kylie added, the family group chat flip. It's so good. Ask about their toughest moments filming the show. Both Kylie and Chloe said they found Katine Jenner's transition from male to female was the hardest to deal with in front of the cameras. Chris agreed and viewers saw some never-before-seen footage of the family matriarch sobbing, with her head down on the kitchen table, before walking away and saying I don't think I can't do this anymore guys. Chris recalled, if I remember rightly, one of the camera guys started crying. It was rough. Kim said her toughest moment was when she was 16 years old and lost the naked photo of her 17-year-old sister Courtney, which she had been using to blackmail her into letting her borrow her jeans. Kim recalled, she had a photo of her naked and I stole it and I put it in my purse. I said if you don't let me borrow your jeans I'll tell dad and I'll expose these photos. I would always hold them in this purse of mine and I hid the purse and someone stole the purse and took the photos. Courtney was underage and the FBI got involved. If I hurt someone else that's when I can't handle it. I remember crying and I was so upset. I thought Courtney would never speak to me again. Kendall said her toughest moment was landing in the UK and receiving a text from Kim telling her that Lamar Autumn had died. She said, I immediately started sobbing on the plane. Then the next text came though saying actually it's okay, he's alive but he's not doing well. Kim explained. Somebody made a fake account and emailed me with the wrong information. Chloe said she was screaming when she heard the incorrect news and said, to go through the emotions as if someone has passed away is the most traumatic thing to do and then to know they're really alive. It was too many emotions I think for any of us to handle. Seacrest brought out champagne to toast to a decade of the Kardashians. To another 10 years. Kim cheered as they toasted.